فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم ويغفر بل الله فقيفز ما دون ذلك he forgives anything other than that لمن يشاء whoever he wills ومن يشرك بالله anybody who associate partners with Allah فقد افترى إثما عظيما number five the fifth reason why the shaykh started with this is that the mushrik who associates partners with Allah in an Islamic country in an Islamic country he would be fought he would be fought because Allah said in the ayah فَاقْتُلُوا الْمُشْرِكِينَ Fight with the pagans حَيْثُ وَجَدْتُمُوهُمْ wherever you find them وَخُذُوهُمْ take them وَحْصُرُوهُمْ siege them وَقْعُدُوا لَهُمْ كُلَّ مَرْسَلٍ sit with for them in every place and the Prophet said in the ayah أُمِرْتُ I was commanded and أُقَاتِلَ النَّاسِ I was commanded to fight with the people حَتَّى until يَقُولُوا لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ until they say لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ فَمَنْ قَالَ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Anyone who says لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ فَقَدْ عَصَمَ مِنِّي مَالُهُ Anyone who says لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ His wealth is sacred from me, is protected from me. وَمَالُهُ His wealth is protected from me. His blood is protected from me. وَحِسَابُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى And Allah is going to account him the day of judgment. Bukhari and Muslim both narrated in Hadith ibn Mas'ud. So this shows us a Muslim can't be killed. Of course, if, unless he does what? Those exceptional things that if he comes with, he will be killed. Such as if he commits major, if he commits some major sins, such as if he commits zina after marriage, okay, or unless he killed another person, then the Muslim will be killed, okay. But generally, the Muslim is not killed. Number six, and the mushrik, that the mushrik, la tuqbal lahu shafaat yom al qiyamah, an intercession will not be accepted from him the day of judgment. The, the pagans, those who associate partners with Allah, their, their, what do you call it, shirk, will prevent them from having the right to intercess. Or for them to even receive intercession done for them. Allah says in the ayah, فَمَا تَنْفَعُهُمْ شَفَاعَةُ الشَّافِعِينَ It will not benefit them the intercession of those who intercede. Allah says in another ayah, in Surah Ghafir, ayah 18, Allah says, مَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ The transgressors and the wrongdoers, they do not have مِنْ حَمِيمٍ وَلَا شَفِيعٍ يُطَاعٍ They don't have any intercessors and they have no one to care for them. The eighth reason why the shaykh started with it is, أَنَّ المشرك, that the mushrik, the one who associates partners with Allah, لا تسمع له دعوة يوم القيامة. His calling will not be heard. It will fall on dead, dead, deaf ears. No one will listen to him. ولا يقبل منه اعتذار. And any excuses that he brings forward will not be accepted. Allah says, ونادوا يا مالك. They will call on to the angel مالك. ليقض علينا ربك. Let our judge, let our Lord judge between us. And then he says to them, قَالَ إِنَّكُمْ مَاكِثُونَ No, you guys are going to remain here. No one's going to listen to what you guys have to say. Allah says in another ayah, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ فِي النَّارِ لِخَزَنَةِ جَهَنَّمَا أُدْعُوا رَبَّكُمْ يُخَفِّفْ عَنَّا يَوْمًا مِنَ الْعَذَابِ That the, the disbelievers, those who associate with partners with Allah, are going to say to the guards of the hellfire, the angels that are guarding the hellfire, they will say to them, Udu'u Rabbakum, ask your Lord for us, and yukhaffif anna yawma min al-adab, that Allah reduces, that Allah reduces the punishment from us, one day, not even now, but one day at least, let him reduce it from us. Then it will be said to them, Qalu awalam taku ta'tikum rusulukum, did it not come to you guys, messengers and prophets? Did it not come to you guys? Bil bayinat with clear evidences. Qalu bala, they say, of course. Qalu fad'u. Then it will be said to them, okay, ask your Lord then. 
وَمَا دُعَاءُ الْكَافِرِينَ إِلَّا فِي الضَّلَالِ But then it says that the calling of the disbelievers will only be misguidance. They are not going to attain anything from it. <coughs> the eighth reason why the author chose to start with this one is because أَنَّ المشرك أَنَّ المشرك that the mushrik has come with something that will prevent him from ever entering Jannah. He will never enter Jannah. He will not even smell the fragrance of Jannah. And he will remain in the hellfire forever and ever and ever. He will never come out. Allah says in the ayah, إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ Anyone who associates partners with Allah, فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ Allah has made Jannah haram from that person. وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارِ And the hellfire will be his final abode. وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِنَ مِنْ أَنصَارِ And the disbelievers, they have no one giving them victory. So those are the reasons why the author chose to start with it. And that's why he chose, رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ to mention that. Now we're going to move on to the second point. The second point, what does shirk mean linguistically and technically? What does shirk mean linguistically and technically? Linguistically, the word shirk means fawasmun, it's a, it's a noun. It's a term used لِشَيْءٍ الَّذِي يَكُونُ بَيْنَ اثْنَيْنِ فَصَاعِدًا it is it's a term used for something that is between two things. <coughs> for example, taqulu you would say Kadishdaraka Rajulani, the two individuals are in partnership. You would say. Washarak ahadum al akhar. They've shared this. It's one, you're sharing something. Something between you two. That's why Nabiullah Musa, what did he say to Allah when he was told to become a prophet? And the, the responsibility of prophecy was given to him. What did he say? He called on to Allah. What did he say? Rabbi sharah li sadri wa yassir li amri وَحْلُ الْعُقْدَةً مِنْ لِسَانِي يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي وَجْعَلْ لِي وَزِيرًا مِنْ أَهْلِي هَارُونَ أَخِي أُشْتُدْ بِهِ أَزْرِي وَأَشْرِكْهُ فِي أَمْرِي وَأَشْرِكْهُ فِي أَمْرِي Bring my brother Harun on with me in partnership with this work. And Harun became a prophet from that. And that was the biggest gift a brother can give to another brother. The greatest gift, right? So Nabi Allah Musa, what did he do? He brought Harun in partnership with him. And what was it that they were sharing? The da'wah. And the calling on to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were both sharing. Good. That's what it means linguistically. What does it technically mean? Technically, when the word shirk is used, is the same meaning you mentioned before, but it's between what? Taswiyat ghayrillahi billahi. It is to equal Allah to other than, is to equal Allah to his creation. Fima huwa min khasaisillah. In things that are uniquely for Allah. Are we all together on that? So we now have to realize that shirk means taswiyah to it is to equal ghayrillahi billahi equaling Allah to other than Allah or equaling Allah to his creation and making them same equal. This taswiyah, this taswiyah, this equal, equal, equalizing, it falls into three things. You can, 
make Allah equal to his creation in his rububiyya in his in his rububiyya or his uluhiyya or his asma'i wa sifat his rububiyya you make Allah equal to his creation walidhalika the brairies and the sufi and the grave worshippers they only believe that equaling about making Allah equal to his creation in rububiyya is where the problem lies that's what they think does it make sense that's where they went wrong they only think that you are a mush you're a disbeliever and you fell into shirk if you equal Allah to his creation in rububiyya for example if you say that this person creates and Allah creates does that make sense but we believe that that's one part of shirk are you with me shirk can also fall into where well here which is to equal Allah in the actions that you come with they don't believe that that's where they go deficient because they only believe that if you do shirk with Allah it means that you're equaling Allah's actions Allah's actions that he does you're equaling it to the action of the creation that's the only one they think are we all together does that make sense but we believe if you equal Allah in your actions that you do and you do shirk in that with another creation then you've also fallen into shirk and we say that that part that type of shirk which is the shirk that falls into uluhiyah is the one that the prophets came for because the kuffar of Quraysh did not do they did not equal Allah with his creation in rububiyah they didn't are we all together? They didn't. They came with shirk in uluhiyah. Does that make sense? And the third type which is shirk in what? Al-asma'i wa sifat. وَلِذَلِكَ الشَّيْخْ عَبْدِ الرَّحْمَنِ إِبْنُ حَسَنِ إِبْنُ مُحَمَدِ بْنِ عَبْدِ الْوَهَابِ إِنَّ شَرَحُ عَبْدِ الْكِتَابِ فَتْحُ الْبَجِيدِ which is the sharah of kitab al-tawheed. He says, when he, when he speaks about shirk, he says it means taswiyatul makhluq bil khaliq. It is equalizing the creation to the creator. Good. Have we learnt it now? And we know the Prophet is hadith which is what? And taj'ala lillahi niddan wa huwa khalaqaka. That the Prophet said, the greatest form of sin is what? To equal Allah to his creation when he's the one who created you. Are we all together? Very good. Now we move on to we move on to the third point. Which is what's the reality of shirk? I've already touched on it. When I was defining it, I told you guys. And brothers and sisters, because many people don't understand the reality of shirk they run away from shirk but they fall into shirk how they're running away from the term but they're not running away from the meaning does that make sense to you guys in other words they hate the term shirk but what they're doing, the reality of what they're doing and the meaning that's in shirk is present in you. And the reason why that the person is falling into that is because he doesn't understand the reality of shirk. What really is shirk? And I did tell, tell you guys that shirk is what? It is التشبيهul khaliqi bil makhluqi When you make the creation equal to the creator. Are we all together? 
And we said that it falls into the three types that we mentioned, which is in Allah's, Allah's rububiyyah, which is Allah's actions. Everything Allah does, we can't associate anybody with Allah in it. Allah is the only creator, Allah is the only sustainer, Allah is the only provider, Allah is the only king. We only believe that. Unique for him. Sah? Are we all together? Are we all together? We also single him in the actions that we come with. We don't fast except for him. We don't slaughter except for him. We don't supplicate and we don't call on to except him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We also single him in our actions. We only pray to him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we, all, we only take an oath on him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We single him in our actions that we come with. And we also single him in his names and attributes. We know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is hearing, it befits his majesty. Allah is seeing, befits his majesty. We know Allah's hand befits his majesty. He's not like his creation. We do not make the creation and the creator the same in this regard. Are we all together? So if you don't understand the reality of shirk, what will happen? You will fall into something you're running away from. And I just said to you a couple of minutes ago, that the people who believe that shirk is exclusive to rububiyya, they fall into shirk when they are hating the term. They hate the term, they hate shirk. They don't want to be from the mushrikeen, but they're falling into it because of the fact that they think it's what? That you only have to single Allah in his actions that Allah does. Are we all together? No. You need to single Allah in your actions that you do, you old slave. Does that make sense? Very good. And Ibn al-Qayyim expands on that. And he talks about that in great detail in his kitab, ad da wa dawa And also Ibn al-Qayyim talks about it in great detail in his kitab, Iratatul Lahfan fi Masayidi al-Shaytan. I'm now going to go into a fourth point. I'm going to go into, I'm going to a fourth point, which is, Anwa'u shirk The types of shirk there are Ma'adabidu kulli naw'in And I'm going to mention A dabit for all of the types I mean how to distinguish one from the other When you look at the nusus al-kitabi wa sunnah I mean when you look at the Quran When you look at the sunnah and when you look at the aqwal of the ulama, the statement, the statement of the scholars, the shirk is categorized into two. The first one is shirk akbar, major shirk. And the second one is shirk which is asghar, minor shirk. The Quran has shown that. And the Sunnah has shown that. Where's the evidence for this categorization? The evidence is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah said, إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ Anyone who associates partners with Allah, فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ Allah has made Jannah haram from them. وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارِ And the hellfire is their final abode. وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِنَ مِنْ أَنصَارِ And... The wrongdoers, they don't have no one giving them victory. This ayah is now talking about the major one. But by, by agreement between the scholars. This is what he's talking about. He's talking about the major one. Bila niza'i bayna al-ulama. Also Allah says well, in another ayah, وَلَقَدْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ وَلَتَكُولَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Surah Zumar. That Allah has sent a revelation on you, Muhammad. And he has sent a revelation to the prophets that came before you. That anybody who associates partners with Allah in action, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will nullify their righteous deeds and they will, come, they will be from those who are lost. So those two ayah that I mentioned are for the major one. But where did the minor come from then? The minor comes from the authentic hadith that Imam Ahmad narrated in his Musnad. And Mahmud ibn Rabi'in radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that this noble companion, Mahmud ibn Rabi'in, Sorry, Muhammad ibn Labid, sorry. Muhammad ibn Labid. Muhammad ibn Labid. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu is a companion. He said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said 
inna akhwa fa ma akhafu alaykum ash-shirk al-asr the prophet said that w- the thing that i fear the most for you all is the minor shirk companions then said wa ma ash-shirk al-asghar what is the minor shirk the prophet said ar-riya showing off showing off Al-Bani rahimahullah, he authenticated this in his Sasila Hadith Sahihah, Hadith 951. If you want to see more about this categorization of the shirk, go to the Kitab Madarj al-Salikin, first volume, page 30, 339 to 340, um, uh, uh, 47. Go to the al Fatawa by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, the first volume, page 90. Al-Dawa al-Dawa by Ibn al-Qayyim, page 196 to 208. Go to the Kitab Iratatul Lahfan Fi Masayid al-Shaytan First volume, page 71 to 76. And also Sheikh uh, Salah al-Fawzan He has a Durus al-Quran al-Azim Lessons on the Quran is published. Page 172 to 173. We've now understood the evidences for major and minor shirk. We want to now know what is the dhabit. How do you know one from the other? Like, how can I say this is major and this is minor? How do we know? Sheikh ibn Uthaymeen, in his fatawa, when he was asked, he said, Kullu shirkin atalakahu shari'. Every shirk that the Sharia unrestrictedly says, and it consists in it that the person will re- leave the fold of Islam. That's what Shirk Akbar is. In other words, but number one, the Sharia has to refer to this as Shirk. Number two, this thing has to be something that will take you out of the religion. What's the Dabit for Shirk Asghar then? We understood now Akbar. What is the Dabit for Shirk Asghar? Shirk Asghar is, as Legend of Daima said, and this is the best Babid that was placed for it. Fatawa Legend of Daima, they mentioned it. First volume, page 517. I'm talking about Taba'at al Ula, Maktabat al Ba'ari. They said, Kullu ma naha anhu shara. It is anything that the Sharia prohibited. Mimma huwa dari'atul ila shirk al Akbar. And it is a means to the major shirk. وَوَسِيلَةٌ لِلْوَقُوعِ فِيهِ And it will lead you to the major shirk. وَجَاءَ فِي النُصُوصِ تَسْمِيَةُ شِرْكًا And the Sharia referred to this as shirk. Good. So it's anything that the Sharia prohibited. It referred to it as shirk. And it is a means to the major shirk. It's a means to it. Now I'm going to mention differences of the two. Point number five. What's the difference between the two types? The scholars, they mentioned many differences for the two types. The first one is, Shirk Akbar, it will take you out of the fold of Al-Islam, whereas the Maida Shirk will not take you out of the fold of Al-Islam. Number one. Number two, Major Shirk, all your righteous deeds will be nullified. Minor shirk, all your, right, all your righteous deeds will not be nullified. Number three, shirk akbar permits a person's blood and wealth. Shirk akbar does not permit that. How many points did I mention? Three. Four. Shirk Akbar, if the person dies upon it, he will stay in the hellfire forever. Shirk Asghar, he will not stay in the hellfire forever. And five, Allah does not forgive a person who comes with major shirk. If he dies upon it, of course. And the one who comes with minor shirk, he falls under Allah's Mashi'ah, according to one of the opinions of the ulama. The sixth point that we take, the sixth point that we take is 
شرك أكبر it falls in الوهية الربوبية على الأسماء والصفات and examples for each one so I did mention it before but I didn't give you examples so now inshallah ta'ala I'm going to give you guys I'm going to give you guys example example of shirk in rububiyya is that the person believes that there's a person who is other than Allah who can actually benefit you and harm you they have the ultimate strength to benefit you and harm you independently or they associate or they are with Allah in benefiting you they can benefit you as much as Allah can benefit you they can harm you as much as Allah can harm you they believe Allah they run your affairs as much as Allah runs your affairs they believe that they created you as much as Allah created you. This person has fallen into a shirk of rububiyyah. And kuffar of Quraysh did not come with this one. They did not believe that. They didn't believe that. Kuffar of Quraysh believed that Allah is the only creator. Allah is the only sustainer. Allah is the only provider. Allah is the only one who can benefit. Allah is the only one who can harm. They knew that. They knew Allah raised if Allah wanted to raise somebody, they knew Allah is the only one who raised the person. If somebody is humiliated, they knew Allah is the one who humiliates them. They knew all of that. They, didn't, they did not in any way, form or shape believe that there was somebody who associated partners with Allah in that. The second one is where they went short. The second one is that you associate partners with Allah in the acts of obedience that you come with. Such as you pray to other than Allah or you supplicate or you call on to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you associate partners with Allah in what? in love well, why are they going to say the people who are, who are like that the day of judgment Allah is going to say to them they're going to say We used to equal you to Allah in love. So it's shirk fil uluhiya. If you love somebody like you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or even greater, if you love them even more, or if you fear with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala somebody. The fear that you have for Allah. Or you call on to the dead. Hoping that they are going to bring you benefit or repel harm from you. All of these are shirk akbar. Go back to the Taysir al-Aziz al-Hamid. The Sharah of Sulaiman. 40, page 40. The third one is. A shirk fil asma'i wa sifat. Shirk in what? Allah's names and? Allah's names and? Allah's names and attributes. And this happens in two ways. In Allah's names and attributes, it happens in two ways. Number one is shirk al-ta'atil. Shirk al-ta'atil means the shirk of distortion. Where the person, he distorts Allah's essence, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, he distorts Allah's essence. In other words, the person denies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like what Fir'aun said, فَقَالَ أَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْأَعْلَىٰ I'm your supreme lord. He has what? Distorted. He has dismantled Allah's existence, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fir'aun, what he did. This is called shirk al-ta'atil. Good. The second type is called shirk al-tamteel. Shirk al-tamteel is two types. Shirk al-tamteel means the shirk of comparing And it's two types. Is when you compare the creation to the creator. Comparing تمثيل المخلوق بالخالق. The first one is comparing 
the creation to the Creator. Like the Nasara did. They compared Isa ibn Maryam with Allah. They took Isa and gave him the attributes of Allah. Okay? Number two is Tamthilul Khaliqi bil Makhluqi is the opposite of the first one. Is the creator to the creation. So you give Allah characteristics of the creation. And you put him down subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you take him below. Like some people fell into. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah in his Majmu' al-Fatawa, he mentioned there are a group of people who used to say, we affirm for Allah everything except a beard and a private part. Everything else we affirm for him. Like he, he's like the creation in everything else. Except a private part and a beard. We don't give that to him. Everything else Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has it with the creation. And we affirm it like the creation for him. This is called shirku al-tamthil al-khaliq bil makhluq We'll stop there inshallah ta'ala for today. If you want to see more about this one, tamthil al-khaliq bil makhluq and tamthil al-makhluq bil khaliq, go to the following books. Go to the Majmu' al-Fatawa by Ibn Taymiyyah, first volume, page 91 to 92. Adda'u wa dawa by Ibn Qayyim, page 198 to 206. The Kitab at tabbihat al sariya ala al-Wasitiya, page 126. I'lam al-Sunnat al-Manshura by Hafid al-Hakami, page 50 to page 84. Madarij al-Sarikin, first volume, page 339 to 347. Taysir al-Aziz al-Hamid, page 43 to 46. All of those places you can find those references, inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong, incorrect, is from me and Shaytan and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.